Hello, welcome back to the workshop. I'm going to finish the servicing on the front brake on my Triumph Bonneville T140 today. So I did quite a lot of the work uh, a couple of uh, days ago uh, and I'm going to finish the reassembly today. So I've already done some editing on the footage from before. So I've decided to break this down into four separate videos and this will be the fourth part. So in the first part of the video, I removed the front brake master cylinder and the front brake caliper from the bike and stripped them down. In the second uh, video, I cleaned all the parts in my ultrasonic cleaner. In the third video, I reassembled the front brake caliper with the, the new seals and refitted that on the bike. So today I'm going to reassemble the front brake master cylinder, get that back on the bike, get all the system connected up, reintroduce some brake fluid, uh, uh, bleed the system and hopefully get the bike back on the road this afternoon. So I'm just uh, going to clean up the inside of the master cylinder here. Now, just going to do that carefully. So I've got my Dremel here and I've got little felt pad on there. So I'm just going to put just a little bit of metal polishing paste on this pad. Just spread it around there. And then run that just inside. Probably can't see because the light's not too good, but it's just really the first bit there of the cylinder that usually gets a bit gunged up. So this is So if I wipe that out now, it should all be clean inside there now. Yeah, that's come up beautifully. Probably can't show you because of the light. If I can get a decent light on that, maybe show you. Just grab a light. So, I'm trying to line everything up here, get it focused. Not easy. No. It's, it's, it's too difficult trying to get that in there, but yeah, you can maybe just see there now that the inside of that uh, cylinder is nicely cleaned up now. Certainly if I have a look down there. Yeah, just maybe just give it a little bit more. Just, just a little bit of a crud on there. more of this metal paste on the wheel. I did this on my uh, Harley Davidson master cylinder when I was servicing that and it made a huge difference. Just gets rid of that build up of crud at the end of the cylinder. Take another look with my torch. Yeah, much better. That's lovely. Nice smooth bore to that now. So piston should slide up and down there nicely. This is my front brake master cylinder. I've cleaned it up in my ultrasonic cleaner and I did a separate video on that if you want to watch that. I'll put a link at the end of this video. And in doing so I've also removed all the paint. So the uh, solution I used in the ultrasonic cleaner softened the paint um, certainly on the cylinder bit here and so then I uh, fetch the rest of it off with a wire brush. I've cleaned it all up and I'm wearing rubber gloves now because I've also wiped it all down 
uh, with alcohol uh, to get any remaining grease and I don't want to get any fingerprints on it and I've masked up the areas you can see where we don't want to uh, get any paint such as around the thread and the holes that uh, go through to the cylinder what have you and the ends so I'm now going to repaint this I've bought some um, satin black paint and I'm um, going to give it a few coats but uh, and I won't bore you with all of it uh, just give it a few coats uh, of, of this paint and then let that dry and then I'll start on the reassembly so that'll do for the first bit take it nice and steady I'll let that dry turn it over do another bit and give it give it quite a few separate um, coats till I'm happy with it so I'm just uh, cleaning up the brake parts and I've got the uh, the plunger pin here at the uh, master cylinder just just cleaning it up I've got a wire brush here in there as well Okay, I've got my uh, service kit here, so I'm just going to open this and make sure I've got all the parts I need to replace the old parts. Get them all set out here, and then I know I can uh, discard the old parts. Then I don't want to discard any of them before I know that I've I've got all the bits I need. Excellent. Right. So these are all the old bits so the washer the dust cap so the diaphragm so that's the check valve so there's a new check valve here so I can take this old one off the end of the spring Remove this one from the end of the spring. Even though most of these parts are in good condition, it makes sense to replace them all whilst I've got it all apart. So that's the check valve out. So this is the um, the secondary seal here. Um, and that's the new one. The old one's still on the on the piston here. I haven't taken that one off yet, so I'll take that off in just a second. Okay. And then there's the there's the small washer there as well. So I think that's all my parts all lined up nicely. So I know then I can uh, I can dispose of the the old ones safe in the knowledge that I've got all the, the new replacement parts. So. Now getting this old um, seal here off the, the pistons it, it's quite a, a tricky job and obviously um, you've got to do it without um, damaging it. This is the secondary seal point here on the on the piston so I need to get that off without uh, damaging it. Well I don't need to get it off without damaging it but I want to get it off without damaging it just in case because then you know it, it does actually look like it's in good condition um, and use it again now it is quite difficult getting them off however they are very stretchy at these so I've just I, this is an awl and it's a blunt ended awl so it's not going to tear it or anything just work that underneath and uh, as you can probably see that's actually stretching quite away there and then just use that as a as a 
fulcrum to slide it over and stretch it round and you can probably see it's stretching quite away is that without damaging it so pull it off that's it got that old seal off right I'm just going it's actually all in quite nice condition I've already cleaned all this in the uh, in the ultrasonic cleaner but I, I'm, I'm just going to get a little wire brush round there just to make sure that all of the the debris and, and stuff is out so before I start reassembly I've just I like to get all my parts lined up in the right order so now I've got everything there I've got everything in the right uh, place so I've got the the check valve here which fits in the end of the spring then we've got the retain spring uh, on the end of the, uh, the spring there's the little spring retainer, little plastic retainer then we've got the primary seal which will go in that way we've got the piston washer then the piston there's three little holes in the piston which need to be clear but I can see through there they're all clear then there's the secondary seal which I'll just pop on the piston in, in a second that goes uh, this way around now all, all that assembly will go into the the piston we've got then got the circlet which I'm just putting out of the way there the dust cap goes on and then of course the the push rod then fits on the end so um, I'm going to put some uh, rubber gloves on because uh, everything's going to be well lubricated with um, brake fluid as I put it back together. So I've got some rubber gloves on and I've got a bit of brake fluid here in, in the cap to lubricate everything. So I'm going to start putting it all back together and everything will be well lubricated with brake fluid because uh, the biggest risk when you're reassembling the master cylinder is that you... Um, you, you damage one of the uh, valves, um, yeah, one of the seals, um, you know, they've got quite delicate lips on them and you don't want to, to damage those, so nice and slowly and gently and making sure everything's well lubricated. So first job I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this uh, check valve um, back into the end of the spring. It's actually quite a tight fit is this, um, might be quite a job pushing this in, we'll see. If I'm faffing around I'll just edit the faffing out so you don't have to watch me faffing it just pushes in um, there's nothing complicated just pushes in there it's just that it's quite tight as you can see right that's seated nicely on there so that's the that's the check valve in place bit fiddly um, that's just taken me I don't know two or three minutes of just gently gently easing it in but uh, um, due to the the magic of video editing I'll make it look like it was a very quick and smooth operation I um, I find that um, with with any of these jobs and particularly you know reassembling the master sound is quite a fiddly job uh, just patience is the virtue patience just be gentle with everything be patient if things aren't working properly go and put the kettle on make a cup of tea come back to it 10 minutes later and eventually you get there okay so the next job then is uh, putting this um, secondary seal here onto the piston and again this needs plenty of lubrication uh, to get it over there it will stretch so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in uh, my brake fluid and I'm just going to soak it in the brake fluid just just for a few minutes um, and that will make sure it's 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 nice and soft and I'll put plenty of uh, brake fluid around here as well but um, whilst you've got to be careful not to um, damage it also you know don't be shy that um, they are very flexible and it will stretch oh. you probably can't see a thing I'm doing because I'm working on a, a black seal with black gloves but and of course no problem is as soon as you cover everything in brake fluid it becomes very slippy and hard to keep whoops hard to keep hold of so everything is very slippy patience is a virtue there we are that's it it's on uh, that's lovely okay let me get myself straight again here so we've got all the bits here in the right sequence for assembly so let's start putting it all together it's 
So I'll get some loop in here. Make sure this is all well looped. And right, the the next thing to go down is this primary seal, and this is where you've got to be very careful because it has to go in with the the thin lip edge first, and so you want to be very careful not to damage that as it goes in. Right, don't know if you can see there, but that's in and that's seated and um, that's seated now up against the uh, the spring retainer and the spring so the next item to go in is the piston washer pop that in on top of here now and then the piston and again I've got this well lubricated particularly around the seal. So piston in. It's really the seal that's the, the tight fit. Right, before I go any further, because once I get that in there, it's obviously the, the spring's going to want to push it back out again. Um, I just go and grab my circlip pliers and then uh, I'm on hand with my circlip to, um, to be able to put that in. I'd also I think I'll take these rubber gloves off now. I'll just clean myself up, take these rubber gloves off because I want to be able to have a good hold of that piston and everything in order to be able to get the circuit pin. So this is where you really need three hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp the piston in the soft jaws of the vise, then that's holding the piston and then that's one less thing that I'm fighting against. So I'm in the soft jaws here and this is very difficult to do and make it visible to the camera at the same time. But what I'm doing, I've got the push rod here. You're fighting it against the return spring all the time. So I'm pushing down on the piston there. And then I need to get my circlip over there and drop that over the top. You're pushing down on the piston to keep the piston out of the way. And then I've got to keep one hand on that to stop the piston flying back up again. Because as soon as I let the pressure off that, it will pop out and that uh, seal will come out again. But then get the uh, the circlip pliers on the circlip here if I can. You probably can't see a thing I'm doing, but actually sometimes I find that it's easier with the circlip just to push it in. I'll use this all just to push it in. You just want to get it to seat. That's it. That's actually in now. Just need to get it to seat. Just heard it click into place. I don't know if you heard that, but that circlip has just clipped into place, so I can let go of that now. And I just want to make sure it is properly seated all round. But actually, I can see it is. So that's in now. I'm sorry if you couldn't see what I was doing because my hand was in the way, but it's very difficult to know where to put the camera to do that. So I've got the whole piston assembly back together now. You know, the plunger obviously works into there. And so now I can um, start um, reassembling the whole unit. Pop the dust cap on the end of the cylinder now. So I'll just loop that with a bit of brake fluid and that just... Um, fits over the, the end here. There we go. That's the dust cap on. And of course, the uh, push rod goes through there once you've got it all assembled. Great. I'm going to screw this side in. What I'll do is I'll just, I'm going to put a bit of grease on the, on the thread here, just because I hate assembling anything just a tiny little bit of grease on here, but I hate assembling metal on metal dry. And also, it'll ensure that if and when it comes apart next time, it will do. So, now this is probably the only kind of really 
fiddly bit of the operation is, is getting this right but what I do is first of all screw it in all the way so all the way to the end of the thread which is there which obviously things aren't lining up properly there it should be should be the other way up um, just back it off a little bit to there okay and then you need to put the um, put the push rod and the the lever in and then you can adjust it by screwing the piston in and out until you've got it in exactly the right place so again I'll just put a little bit of grease on here just the tiniest amount that goes through here and then bait lever in place this might come off again before I reassemble it but put grease on it anyway just pop that nut on to hold it in place I'm not actually tightening it all the way down right so we've got the whole assembly together now obviously apart from the the uh, cylinder but what we need to do is to make sure that it's actually when the brake lever returns um, that it's actually opening properly so I'll try and explain um, you know the easiest way of lining things up so first of all the grub screw that retains on this side here you can see the groove in the thread through the the hole here so I can see that that's lined up in actual fact if I hold it this way um, you can see that it, the, it's the um, where the, uh, the cylinder fastens on the top the reservoir cylinder it's not straight up it's actually slightly off it's actually 10 degrees off is that so I've got that all lined up right but you need to be sure that uh, where the push rod's pushing into the uh, piston there that there's correct clearance for the fluid to return so the way to do that is if you block up the the main port which is the big one on this side if I hold that up to the camera hope you see that's the main uh, port there the the, the, the large one um, block that up and just block it up with my thumb and then blow into the hole here air should be coming up through the port here. Now you might say well blowing into it you're going to be introducing moisture into the system from your breath. Well perhaps but only a tiny little bit and obviously I'm going to be flushing all the fluid through quite thoroughly as I bleed it. So sorry this is going to be off camera but you might be able to hear. So I'm blocking that up with my thumb then just blowing into the, the hole at the end here and I can actually hear that there is air and if I put my finger over it I can there so already that's fine but what I need to do now is back it off one complete turn from there so I back it off one complete turn and again you make sure you've got the alignment right for the grub screw at the bottom there which is is fine that should be set fine now so that um, the fluid returns properly when you um, release the brake so if I blow into it now and um, pull the lever I, I can't really do this on camera but uh, if I blow into it with the brake lever released it's sealed but if I pull the brake on right so you can hear the air coming out with the brake released but when I pull the brake on it's blocking that uh, hole up so maybe you can hear it the air's releasing there pull the brake on and it's totally sealed so I've got that adjusted right so I can now put the grub screw again just making sure that that's aligned properly in the groove so here's my, my grub screw before I put it in I'm just going to put a little uh, uh, dab of Loctite on, on that grub screw um, it's not strictly necessary but for two reasons one to make sure 
I don't lose it because obviously it's facing down so it could drop out but secondly it kind of um, uh, cleans up the thread uh, because these grip screws are in out for sort of seizing in so uh, I found with a bit of Loctite on it that means that it won't actually um, uh, seize because the Loctite's protecting the thread. I've got my uh, Allen keys, it's, uh, it's quite a small one um, you will need for the grub screw. It's um, five sixty-fourths. It's that one. And I'm just putting some quite mild uh, Loctite on. It's the Loctite uh, two four eight, um, which is the blue, and it's uh, it's like this kind of lipstick um, one. It's which is not quite as strong a bond as the uh, as the the fluid Loctite lipstick. I'm not even going to go there on that one. Get into trouble. Okay, so again, just checking. I can see. Oh no, it's knocked out of alignment now. You can just check that right. I can see the groove there now. I can see the groove is is lined up, which should have my ten degree offset for the master cylinder. And uh, first rule of using a camera is you fumble everything as soon as you switch the camera on. Put it on that end, it's easier to get it started. Again, get that lined up. I can see my groove. Let me grip screw in. Success this time. Okay, and just nip that up. Okay. So now I need to put the, the reservoir back on. The, the reservoir is at a, a slant so it points away from the lever when you put it on um, like that. It needs to be pointing away from the lever. So I've got my um, rubber o-ring here. You can lubricate that with a bit of brake fluid but I actually prefer to just put a bit of... I've got some uh, rubber grease here. Just put the slightest amount of that around the o-ring. Which of course is round, but it's got to be fitted in an oval shape round here, like this. And again, there is a risk a bit of that grease will find its way into the system, but hopefully it will just dissolve and flush its way through. The reason I prefer that is because it just introduces brake fluid round here, which starts with corrosion before you you know you've even gone anywhere. Um, okay, so. That lined up over and just double check, yeah, that's okay. Happy with that. Then there's this little spacer that drops down there, and that's really just to stop you crushing the plastic as you reassemble it all. Useful to have a prodder. Then this washer goes on, and then the nut, and that's a um, nylon washer lock nut. So, I've got my socket here. Tighten that down. Obviously, you don't want to over tighten that, but nor do you want it to leak. So, you tighten it down to just the right amount. got to me. Excellent, so we are there, ready to go back on the bike. Obviously I need to tighten that down, I'll do that in a second. I've got my uh, diaphragm here and pop in but uh, I'm not going to bother with that until um, until we've got the system back on the bike and we've got it all bled and everything and then that diaphragm will go back on. fine. I'll check that again when it's back on the bike but we're great. Now I can uh, remount the uh, master Simba cylinder assembly on the bike and it just fastens onto the switch unit with these um, four screws which are allen head.
Okay, lovely. Good, right. Now reconnect the brake line on here. So the um, brake line attaches with this uh, banjo uh, bolt and of course a couple of uh, copper washers. Uh, uh, so um, I sometimes anneal and reuse washers but I'm going to treat it some new ones. So I've got a, a, a box, I don't know if you can see here, I've got a box full of different sizes of copper washers. So I'll just find a couple of the, the right size and then I can reassemble this. I've had the brake line tied back with a bit of string here just to keep it safe and out of the way. So I'll get rid of that now. So I've got my new copper washers. And the bolt. Assembled and sealed up. Okay, there's a little rubber boot goes over there, but I'm not going to put the rubber boot on until I've um, put all the fluid back in the system and pressurised it, just to just to make sure that there's no leaks through those new copper washers there. Okay, so I'm all set up to bleed my system here. So I've got a a pipe coming off the, the bleed nipple down here into a, a jam jar just to catch the fluid and this pipe's got a little one-way valve on it you can possibly see there so the idea is that when you um, uh, open the, the, the bleed nipple um, it'll pump out but it won't come back in again so it sort of uh, makes it easier it means that you don't have to keep opening and closing the um, the nipple. However, I tend to do that anyway, out of force of habit. So I come round to the to the master cylinder to uh, squeeze the the brake lever. So just open the 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 nipple so enough for some fluid to go through. Then release the lever. Then put pressure on the brake lever. Open the nipple, and you can see this fluid starting to come through. It's just a process of doing this until you got all the air out of the system. Not too difficult really. Again, as with all of these jobs, it's just that it requires patience. You gotta keep keep checking the master cylinder just to make sure that the level's not getting too low. Just keep topping it up as you go. Great, so that's the, the front brake system blade. Just make sure there's no spilt fluid there. Pop the uh, little dust cap back on the blade nipple. And the last job then is to replace the nice chrome cover over the brake caliper. And then we're, we're good to go. Excellent. Right, so that is the front brake system, all stripped down, serviced, new seals, washers, etc. and new brake fluid. Let's take it out for a test slide. <laughs> 